the first step is to set my oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's already there. I preheated it because I made two batches, or made one batch, and now I'm filming the second batch as if I hadn't done it before. Now I'm going to get the noodles started. I'm supposed to use egg noodles for this. This is a local brand. Uh, cream, creamet. Um, enriched egg noodles, extra wide egg noodles. That seems like an appropriate size and shape. A 12 ounce bag is what's required for one batch. I've got five quarts of water in here in this kettle and I've got to get that boiling and then I'll add the noodles. For this recipe um, I need a 9 by 12 inch baking pan. I think a metal one would work but I think most people have a it's a standard size 9 by 12 glass baking pan and you need to coat it with something and uh, I'm just going to use Pam. I do that now because I'll forget otherwise. It's been pammed. Meanwhile, on the other burner, I've got just a low flame going under it and I'm going to melt a little bit of butter in here. Uh, recipes are all over the place on this, but I usually melt in almost all of one of these. Um, I guess that's a half stick of butter. It ends up being like four tablespoons. The last batch I made today I used uh, three tablespoons. I think I'll do that again. And I'm going to use this uh, bamboo, um, or whatever that is, stir-fry spatula. Works well for this kind of thing. While I'm waiting for that to melt, I've diced a, um, I don't know, I'd say sort of a medium onion and by the time I peel off the outer couple of layers and so on, I don't know what that amounts to. It's maybe around a cup of onions. A lot of recipes call for about half of that. I like this amount, but it's not time to put them in yet. Just for something to do while I'm waiting for the butter to melt and so on. Um, I have a couple cans here of Chicken of the Sea Solid White Albacore Tuna in Water. That's the kind I like to use for this. And these are all dishes I used in the first batch. I make kind of mess and I cleaned it up already. And I have um, a 14 and a half ounce, these used to be 16 ounces till they downsized them, uh, chicken broth, which is something I'll use later. But I've got them at the ready. All right. Okay, time for the onions to go in. Just spreading the onions out and rolling them around in the butter. I'm not a skilled or trained or experienced cook although I have made a lot of different things over the years. So I have my techniques. They may be not quite the same as somebody who knows what they're doing better would do, but it seems to work. Okay, everything is pretty much ready there. I've set a timer for about five minutes. I'm going to stir these about once a minute, and then that should be adequate for the saute process. Meanwhile, I've got about a boil going here in the pot, so I'm going to add, uh, well, the recipe on the, or the instructions on the bag of noodles says add one tablespoon. I usually put in about three quarters of a uh, tablespoon of salt at this point. All right. Okay, now I'll let it come back to a boil. It shouldn't take long at all. I haven't used this stove since before COVID. <laughs> That's how little I've been cooking. 
or the oven for that matter. When I have had to bake things, I've been using my toaster oven because it's a really big one, like the size of a decent sized microwave. Doesn't require preheating or anything like that, but for this, I need to use the, the heavier equipment. Okay, noodles go into boiling water. And I start my ovens. Oops, it cleared out. I have to set it again. There we go. Six minute timer. That's uh, about what's recommended on the bag and that's what I used the last time to get kind of somewhere between medium and al dente um, on the noodles. And I'll stir this roughly once a minute. I can't forget to stir the onions that are being sautéed. While I'm stirring and waiting on the noodles and the sautéed onions, I poured a cup of milk. I used 2% for this. And I've also got the top loose on the chicken broth. And the timer's gone off, said it's enough sauteing. Okay, at this point I put in some minced garlic. I could mince it myself, but I got lazy. And I'm just using this pre-minced garlic in the jar. Uh, various recipes have different ideas for how much should go in there, I put in three teaspoons. There it is. And I'm going to stir that in. Get it distributed, if nothing else. It's not like this has to be sautéed, it's just getting mixed in more or less with the, more or less evenly with the onions at this point. That's the, the goal here. have them all bunched up in one spot. And now I try to get it like this and I'm going to add some flour. Okay, that means the noodles should be done. Okay, uh, first things first, I'm going to drain the noodles now so they don't get overdone. Take them off the heat, get my colander ready, okay there's that. And I'm going to relocate these into a bowl so they don't get stick to, stuck to the colander. Looks good. Okay, so now I need three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Got my good old gold metal here and my tablespoon. Okay, there's the flour in there and now I just gotta stir this around a bit, get it mixed up. This is, uh, I believe, there to be a thickening agent because now we're gonna add milk and um, chicken broth here very shortly. I'm not really sure it has to be stirred in that much at this stage, but at this point you don't want to leave the flame on unless you add liquid, so I have to be pretty quick about adding the uh, milk. And the chicken broth. And get that stirred up.
it wants to of course clump up here because it's got the flower in it so at this point I like to um, well again when I say I like to it's based on my tiny amount of past experience a little bit of hopefully common sense and uh, what I did with this on the previous batch today okay so now on this we raise the temperature just a little bit and it's gonna simmer with occasional stirring until it starts to thicken up okay at this point it's time to get my bowl of recently cooked noodles and dump them into the pan prepared pan and uh, before they coalesce here into a solid big half bowl shaped clump of noodles I do want to get them spread out and broken up a little bit It'll help later if I do this now. About like that. The other thing I add at this point is some black pepper. And I like the reasonably fresh kind from the little bottle grinders. kind of about that much okay now for the peas I have a bag of frozen green peas here it's a 12 ounce bag and that's approximately the right amount for this recipe a lot of recipes say two cups this is at least in my experience, very slight that it is. Um, slightly more than two cups, but hardly more than slightly more. <laughs> okay, there's the peas in the bowl. And now I'm going to add the, the tuna from the two cans of that that I've opened. Now I like to break these up really finely uh, so they don't make big clumps later on. And so I should have done this first. The previous time I put the tuna in first, Broke it up, then added the peas. All right, I've got the, uh, the peas and the tuna in there. This stuff is thickening up pretty nicely. I guess I'd call this the sauce. Next for breadcrumbs, I'm using these Progresso brand Panko Crispy Breadcrumbs, plain. And I need about one cup of those. And some grated Parmesan cheese. I just use the regular old Kraft kind or whatever you have around, I guess. I need a quarter cup of this. And, uh... Before doing anything else, I need to get this mixed up pretty more or less evenly. Because it's harder to get it mixed evenly later on. Almost thick enough. Just a little bit thicker. And actually at this point I'm going to go ahead and dump in the um, peas and the tuna into the mixture in the saucepan. Alright, get this mixed in there, stir it in.
This is just a convenient place to mix in the peas. Some recipes that are similar to this call for mixing the peas and the tuna in with the noodles in the baking pan. And um, I think that's a lot harder to stir it in without spilling than it is to stir them in here at this stage. Just keep that warming. Um, I've got some extra virgin olive oil here. Um, a couple of recipes I saw recommended putting in only three teaspoons of this stuff and it wasn't remotely enough. The idea is to put in just enough to get this cheese uh, and breadcrumb mixture to stick together just a little bit to make sort of a crumbly texture without it really making clumps. I don't have a tripod set up to show this but I'm just going to drizzle it in there and stir, drizzle a little and stir until I get the right consistency. So this is about the texture we're looking for where it's making little clumps but not big clumps. And now I think this stuff is cooked enough. It's about the right consistency. So I need to move my bowl of noodles back to here. Get this guy out of the way. Okay, and uh, I need both hands for this, so I'm going to stop the camera. I'm just going to dump all that uh, sauce on top of the noodles. Okay, get the old spoon out and start stirring the noodles to the top. I think that's the cleanest way of doing it without much risk of overflow of the pan, which is pretty full. By moving the noodles to the top, you're encouraging the sauce to go to the bottom. All right, nicely mixed up. Took a couple of minutes of doing that. Uh, my air compressor has gone off in the basement. Okay, the um, mixture in the pan is going to be crusted over with some cheddar cheese, and I've got this already shredded mild cheddar. Eight ounce bag, that's just about perfect for this. It makes two cups, and that's what most of the recipes call for, it's about the right amount. All right, that bag of cheese has been more or less evenly distributed over the top of the mixture in the bowl. And the only thing that still needs to be added to it is uh, this uh, crumbly uh, breadcrumb and cheese mixture as sort of a garnish on the top. All right, um, I find that the best way to distribute these uh, cheese and bread crumbs is just to get a handful of them and just sort of, you know, massage them, <laughs> distribute them around uh, to try to get it more or less even. If I really wanted to, I could take my spoon and kind of finesse it around a little bit, you know, try to get the high spots down and fill in the low spots and that kind of stuff, but I don't think it's really that important. Okay. Well, while I was doing all that stuff, my uh, intelligent stove here decided to uh, stop keeping the heat up. Just when I stopped watching it, it let the heat go down, so I have to let it preheat again, but that's okay. Twenty-five minutes. Get that guy ready to go. All right, I'm back at 400. Get this guy out of here. Put the very heavy pan on the bottom rack. I don't think that's strictly critical, but that's the way I'm doing it. And then start my timer. 25 minutes. Just for the heck of it, I'm gonna set this guy's timer to uh, 22 minutes.
just so I get out here a couple minutes uh, before the other one goes off so I can spot check it just in case it's getting done sooner than I expected. All right. All right, let's get this out of here. Looks good. And you still hear it crackling. <laughs> anyway, that's just about exactly the right appearance. So another successful batch. And all right, that's what it looks like. The lighting isn't that great here. I think it actually looks a little more golden brown to my naked eye than it does in the video. But it came out all right. And here's just a couple of uh, spoonfuls scooped out onto a plate. So I can make sure it came all right using the taste test. Mmm. This stuff is good. Yeah, I'm really happy with this. Good flavor, consistency, texture. Once it cools, it holds together fairly well, at least enough to be scooped out of the pan and um, onto a plate or a storage tub.